What you're about to see is me making an enormous mistake, a huge miscalculation. I'm gonna set up six vermouths and seven ryes, or maybe it was the other way, whatever it was. Uh, it works out to 42 cocktails, which is neat. It's an impressive spread. It looks great in a thumbnail and all that jazz. I thought, well, that's fine because I'm only having a taste of each, right? It never occurred to me to say, well, how many, how large is a taste? How big is my mouth? What do I sip when I sip? I think it's probably close to an ounce, maybe a little under an ounce, maybe it's a half an ounce. Even at a half an ounce, that means if I only had one sip of each 42 drinks, that's 20 something, 21 and a half or 20, yeah, 20 ounces, right? And there's only 22 ounces in a 750 milliliter bottle, right? Every glass will be full come the end of this thing, but I will be in very bad shape. You're about to see me uh, plumb the depths of madness. Um, in the future, uh, I'm gonna be much more careful about this kind of thing. What I'm gonna be doing when we do those kinds of like big long form tasting episodes is I'm gonna get a spit bucket like you see at the wine tastings and we all make fun of. Um, I get it now. Oh, shit, that'll kill you. <laughs> like, holy crap, that's a terrible thing to have happen, yeah. What I want you to know is that I'm being very careful about how I produce this show. I am taking care of my health, um, and I don't want to represent anything to people that I consider to be inherently unhealthy either. That's it. Don't try this at home. Uh, this was a bad idea. Be very, very careful, because overconsumption can sneak up on you. Please drink responsibly. On with the Manhattan Matrix that tried to murder me. <laughs>
Taste the row. That's what we'll do. Why didn't I just put my water in the fridge? A couple of reasons. One, people were going to complain, oh, you're adding fridge taste because this is very clean ice. Nothing ever in here except for ice. Two, this is colder, honestly. I mean, this is just, you're going to get colder this way. Right, one ounce of cold and dilution. Ah, ah. You'll come back in a minute. <laughs> okay, so let's start Michter's and Martini and Rossi. Strong nose. Vaporous. Tasty. Not bad at all. Not very pronounced. Honestly, there's not very strong flavors there. Very um, I mean, butter-ish, butter-ish, kind of like the way a wine can be buttery, but muted. Not spicy, not a lot of evolution, very little character. It's just pretty meh. This one has a slightly more oaky or nutty finish, but otherwise the same. It has a little bit more evolution, honestly. You can taste the wood a little bit, and I like that. And that was um, Martini and Rossi and the Rittenhouse. It's interesting to see how much of a difference the rye will all make in one vermouth. Ooh, man. That old Forester and this is really cool. Mmm, I like that. What is that? What am I calling that? It's got a little bit of bite. It's got some more tannins. It's oakier. It brings a little bit more, mm, it looks like kind of grips the sides of your mouth kind of flavor thing there. It lets you know it's there. It, un, unlike this entirely. This, I mean, this combo tastes like water almost. So I'm glad to find out it wasn't just me. I was worried like, oh cool, I have COVID. I can't taste things or something, you know? <laughs> this one's nice. There's some cherry notes in there. Yeah, I like that. That's definitely the best of the three so far. It's just got the most age and character. Um, although it might be, I mean, for someone who's really kind of new to cocktails, this may be the most acquired taste as well. Whereas this is extremely approachable. Although from my perspective, this one, I'm like, this combo, the Michter's and Martini and Rossi almost is like, am I getting a cocktail here? What is this? So far the old Forester, Kentucky straight rye, hunter proof with Martini and Rossi. Man, that's pretty great. This is also very great. Um, both of these are excellent. This one has a little bit more character, a little bit more evolution, a little bit more, um, more instruments in the orchestra, if I will. This is Whistle Pig and Martini and Rossi. Whoa. That's got some weird notes in it, man. That's familiar though. It's like got some dirt in it. It tastes like dirt. It's like irony, earthy, dirty. Yeah. I mean, that tastes like the smell of digging in the garden, man. That tastes like dirt. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, I like it. It's got character. It's definitely neat. It says hello. <laughs> it's got its own thing going on. Um, neat stuff. Whistle pig. 10 year, 50%. All right, this is the Alberta Premium and Martini and Rossi. It smells sweet to the nose. That's right. Man, you can taste the spice there. That is spicy. You can really taste that. I like that a lot. I mean, these are all different proofs too. Alberta Premium, 66% cask strength. I think this is still my most favorite because it has the most subtle, uh, characterful evolution. But this has the strongest rye spice notes I've gotten. So I don't know if it's, I don't know the mash bills of these off the top of my head. I don't know if this is like 100% rye or something like that. But somehow this one has the most volume turned up on that, um, the rye, if I will. Okay, we're going to the MGP. It's identical. This is identical to the Michters. It really is. I'm so, I don't know if they're both MGP, but. I would not be surprised if this was MGP. What does it say? Bottled in Louisville. Doesn't say where it comes from. Distilled in small batches, blah, 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 blah. Garbage, none of that means anything. They put a barrel number number on it. Okay, that might mean something, but I mean, we know they're not distilling it because they would say distilled by. It says bottled by. I think this is the same fucking whiskey. This is stronger. This is more watered. If it's the same, they added more water to this one. This is 45%. This is 42 and a half. I don't know. I would say if you're buying one of these two guys, and they're probably both available in your liquor store because they're very common, uh, go for who's cheaper because they're the fucking same. Um, okay, this is High West Rendezvous. I've never even had this. It's nice stuff. People love High West. Here we go. High West and Martini and Rossi. This tastes a lot like the Whistle Pig. They both have that dirt flavor. I mean, very similar, these two guys. I like it. 
Oh my God, they're freaking identical. I mean, <laughs> I can't tell the difference. I really can't. I think there might be even the same juice. It's possible. So these guys two, these two guys taste very similar with the Martini and Rossi. These two guys taste very similar with the Martini and Rossi. These three all bring something really unique. Um, this one I love, it's great. It's very, it's unoffensive. It is right down the middle. It's like 25 bucks a bottle. Very good, brings some spice, character, evolution, all of that. This brings a little more spice, a little louder volume on the flavor notes, right? It's just got a little bit more. Subtle differences, subtle differences uh, between the two. I think I like this one better, but I know that I paid a lot less for this. Um, and then this one has its own thing going on, which is, if I'm just still refreshing it, right? That's right, that's the spice, a spicy. Yeah, that's got some spice to it. What the hell? It's also 66%, so it's 120 something proof. So it might just be fire is what I'm tasting. <laughs> okay, let's do the next row. Um, just throw a little ice in here. Throw in a little bit more ice, a little bit more water, shaky dakey. And away we go. We're gonna get, I think by the time we get over to here, we're gonna be in trouble. But that's the hazards of my profession. All right, here we go. An ounce of water. Here we go. Michter's by Noeli Pratt. I dislike this mark, this one. This one is still kind of very low on category, cat, uh, character, but there's like an off note now. I don't like that. Yeah, there's something there. It's like a little like foot flavored. It's amazing what a difference these things make. This is the um, Rittenhouse via Nelly Pratt. It's a little better as it runs down my beard. <laughs> With some cherry in there, that's interesting. I like that. That one has a longer evolution. There's just more going on. There really is. I, I, it's night and day. I, I hate to throw someone under the bus, but ooh, better. It still tastes like cherry wood. And not that it is cherry wood, because it's oak, I'm sure, but well, maybe it could be on cherry, I don't know. Um, but like, there's a lot more evolution and character going on here. I have a funny feeling I just don't like the Nelly Pratt Rouge, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Cause there is still a little foot flavor action going on. That's the weirdest tasting shit. That is what This old Forester has got some tricks up its sleeve. That, I like that. That's different. That doesn't taste like any Manhattan I've ever had, but I like it. it tastes whiny. You can really taste the wine there. That's what that is. And it really works with the, the spicy rye oakiness of this um, Old Forester, which is less spicy than this uh, Old Better Premium, but definitely has some real character to it. Um, I like that. I'm a fan. Whistle Pig and Noelle Pratt. A little less garden taste than it did with the Martini and Rossi, but still has a taste like dirt out of your garden. Tastes like you're tilling the soil. That's what it tastes like. Okay, Alberta Premium by Noelle and Pratt. That has a kind of um, a sweet cherry flavor. It's crazy because it this one was so spicy before and now, is it really me? It makes that much of a difference. That's crazy. It tastes like those, th th wow, 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 wow. The Alberta Premium with the Martini and Rossi versus Alberta Premium with Noelle and Pratt. These are totally different cocktails. That's crazy. What? Wow. One more, just to be sure I'm not out of my mind. Okay, there's that spice. Yeah. Nice spice. Very full-bodied cocktail. Lots of evolution. Mmm, I like that. Ooh, and it has this, like, um, vanilla tobacco kind of finish, actually, that comes at the end there that I... I Enjoying that a lot. That's actually quite good. Huh. The rye has a huge effect on how these drinks turn out, I'll tell you. I mean, I know that's kind of self-explanatory, but I would not imagine to see this much swing one way or the other in different flavor profiles by swapping the rye while maintaining a vermouth, if that makes any sense. You know, I mean, these are huge differences. They're wildly different cocktails. And so it's like, it's so funny to me because people always ask, oh, what can I... Substitute, can I, I'll do a substitution, can I substitute? I always tell people, you can. You can substitute anything you want. You are making a different drink, might be in the same family of drinks, but I can't promise you it's gonna be the same drink. That's not possible. They're fundamentally different things. Although, 
this one and this one are not fundamentally different things and this one and this one at least on the first round were not fundamentally different things so in those two cases they are interchangeable as far as i can tell okay here we go i'm so tired already i kind of like that it's nice it's sweet I'm gonna just check against this though because they were so similar last time. They're different, yeah, definitely. Um, the little bit of extra water that's in this one, because it's a lower proof, I think that they're the same juice, but that that changes things a lot, which is surprising. Or the aging process, maybe they were aged a little differently or they're different barrels or something. They're very similar, but between the two, I think that this is better, just slightly better. Wow, that's interesting. It has a sweetness to it. It's not very spicy. It's definitely, no one would turn that Manhattan down. I mean, nobody would turn any of these down, right? You'd order a Manhattan. You're gonna, this is a Manhattan. Um, but that Manhattan right there really accentuates the sweet parts of a Manhattan, the vermouth, uh, the sweet parts of the aging process. Not so much the spice, whereas like, for instance, this guy is spicy. Uh, this guy's medium spicy. This guy's dirty. Dirty. <laughs> dirty Manhattan. A dirt, the dirt cocktail. You guys, as you can tell, I am a lightweight, but also this is a lot of booze. Okay, here we go. High West by Noelle Pratt. Dirt. Just tastes like dirt and um, moldy cherries. I don't hate it. Not my favorite though. I don't hate it, but it's not my, f not what I would go for, that dirt and old cherry kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, very uh, hygienic pour here because I happened to forget a strainer because I'm dumb. Okay, row three, here we go. This one is Carpano Antica Formula. Everybody loves this vermouth. David Wonders will tell you, and I am inclined to agree, this vermouth is a very specific style of vermouth that does not really reflect what is traditionally considered to be the Torino style of vermouth, the vermouth that cocktails call for when they call for sweet vermouths. This is um, and he has a name for it. It's like vermouth a la vaga, va, uh, vaniglia or something like that. Vaniglia, vaniglia, vaniglia. It's a vermouth with a lot of vanilla added to it. I mean like actual vanilla is added to the flavoring of this. Might be delicious, we'll see. But that is something to keep in mind when comparing it to these other vermouths. You know, there's a certain question of, is this what's intended by a Manhattan? I don't know. Tastes like a vanilla candy. Of course, the Michter's brings very little, although here, I do get a little bit of um, oakiness from it, and that might be coming from the vermouth. That brings, yeah, that's true. There is a late arriving turn towards aging bitter tannins that I think comes from the Antica. I don't think it's this guy bringing it. Pretty moot. Uh, certainly the Antica uh, walks all over this feller. Not bad. For the record, by the way, this is so far the best Manhattan I've gotten from the Michters. Okay, here we go. This is Rittenhouse. Crossed by Antica. Oh, night and day though. I mean, already that's so much better. The extra rye spice really stands up in the face of the Antica. I mean, and the two, oh, they work together so nicely. I mean, it's nice and mellow and vanilla and mm, just the right amount of like biting spice and uh, baking spice and the whole thing is, that's not bad at all, man. That's real good. And it makes me super excited about getting to the Alberta Premium and also this Old Forester because I have a funny feeling that that's going to be extra special. Here we go. Old Forester by way of Antica Formula. Hmm. Old Forester kind of overpowers the, the Antica. Ooh, oh, what a lovely twist there, though. That evolution takes a nice turn. Mm. It's very um, Old Forester up front, very dry spice. And then all of a sudden, after about a one, two, three, four, five, six count, it goes whoop, and it morphs into this vanilla, cherry, mellow, sweet. Nice. It's a nice. My question is, do I like this one or that one better? Because we are trying to find the best one. I don't have a scorecard or anything, but I do have a system in mind. I go with the Forester. The Forester tops it out just a bit. How you sip, you will get different qualities. If you sip with a lot of air or with no air, if you just coat your mouth with just like a kiss of the, the, the drink, or if you really take a slug, you're gonna get different notes on all of those. So as I like, I'm not wobbling around like a weeble wobble over here, oh boy. <laughs> Whistle Pig crossed with Antica Formula. 
in this very fancy old blood. <laughs> A weird thing to drink in Manhattan out of, but we'll make do. Whistle Pig owns it, man. That dirt, just loud dirt flavors. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Bitey, bittery dirt. The Antica doesn't even show up, which is crazy because it's a powerful flavor. Powerful flavor. I say, I say that Antica brings a lot of flavor to the table. It's a joke, ball. It's a joke. Okay. Alberta Rye crossed by Antigua Vomala. We just got down in the Kentucky here. Yeah. Now hold up. <laughs> we may have a winner here. That's fucking cool. That brings the most character I've seen yet. Oh man, that's good. That's so good. That has like all the things you want in Manhattan to have. It is spicy yet sweet. It is balanced. It's got that vanilla, but not, it's tempered here because the Alberta Premium is loud in the glass. So, and that tracks. That's what my thought was with this, is that you want to put this guy with a, um, a rye that doesn't get pushed around, if that makes any sense. The Alberta Premium, I think, I would be shocked if anybody else tops this out with what's left in the list. Of what's here, I have a funny feeling if you like Antica, Alberta Premium is gonna be the way to go. It's not a cheap way to go, I apologize. <laughs> I mean, Old Forester was excellent as was the Rittenhouse, but that right there, man, some kind of magic is happening in this glass. It's just balanced, super well balanced. Mm. Oh yeah, with like a very nice evolution, like baking bread is in there and the cherries and the vanilla and the tannins of the oaks and the spicy rye. I mean, the whole thing is happening. That's very good. That is an excellent cocktail, top notch, um, tough to beat, to be honest. It's also, uh, probably the most expensive cocktail. It's probably the most expensive combination on the table, to be honest. So, you know, you get what you pay for. There's some truth to that, right? Here we go with the Antica uh, crossed by our rye from Bullet Bourbon. Bullet Bourbon. Is it Bullet? It's just Bullet. 95 rye. <laughs> There's a nose to this. I haven't been paying attention to the, sm the nose of these cocktails very much. I like that. It's an intoxicating combination of um, baking spices and cherries. It's okay. I mean, it can't hold a candle to the Alberta Premium. It's okay. It's very flat by comparison. It's tough to say like, oh, how is that by comparison? I mean, by comparison, I would say that's like a flavored glass of water by comparison to the Alberta Premium. But to be perfectly honest, it's a pretty good Manhattan. And on the merits, it doesn't get pushed around by the Antica. The Antica has got a lot of flavor in it and the, um, the bullet stands up to it. So it's not a bad ride to pair with Antica, which is good to know. Preference wise, oh yeah, definitely the Alberta Premium um, or the Old Forester or this. Um, but if you have this and that, they'll make a nice Manhattan together. Now here we go, High West and Antica. Away we go. Dirt, it tastes like dirt. I don't know, just tastes like dirt, like this Whistle Pig tastes like dirt. But it does have I think a, I think it doesn't exist here. It does have a late arriving flavor pro swap, swap. It does have an evolution to it that the Whistle Pig does not give. And that's good, I like that. So there's something to be said for that. Okay, okay. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great. Three rows down, three rows to go. We're at the halfway point of this marathon of alcohol. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, still have ice in there. Finger strainer. Now we're into Punt de Mez. An ounce of ice water for you. Punt de Mez by, crossed with the Michters. I don't like that. I don't like that. Mm. It just tastes kind of cloyingly sweet, to be honest. Um, I don't like that at all. There's flavor profile notes in there that taste almost artificial, like just like flavorants or something. I don't know. I dislike that. I just, I just, Michter's and me are on bad terms. Um, let's try it with the Rittenhouse. That is like candy. I mean, it's funny. I always think of Punta Mez as being kind of more sweet, but that's very nice. It's very, very sweet, but boy, there's a lot of evolution there. You get oak, you get rye spice, you get cherries again. 
different orders all mixed up. Whenever I say those notes, I'm not giving you necessarily in this particular arrangement, the order that they show up, just saying that they're there, they're there. They're all there. So I like that. That's quite good. I should have thought about these glasses before I put them in the drunk zone. This is gonna be tricky. I'm like drinking from a fucking bowl. That brings out some weirdness. I actually think I don't like that. Punta Mez and this. Oh, that's a nice evolution though. Lots of flavors. I don't know that it's a good flavor. It could be something that you like. What is it? I should probably tell you, in that case, I should definitely tell you what it is, right? Butter cherries. Such strong cherry notes there. I mean, it tastes like red, the flavor of red. And spice with the rye spicing. And now finally we get some little bits of wood and leather, not leather, not leather, wood, oaky woods, vanilla woods, tannin woods, you taste it with your nose. It's not bad. I like it. Um, I like that now. Now that I've thought about it, I like that. Uh, Punta Mez, so far, these two guys, quite good. This one, not good. And the problem is, honestly, that this rye brings so little to the table that it's just basically drinking a glass of watered down Punta Mez. I guess we won't be working together. Um, all right. Whistle Pig crossed by Punta Mez. Uh, that's a question for my Italian fans. Is it Punta Mez? 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 Or mez. Mez. I don't know. I would assume punt a mez. But it could be punt a mez. Is it punt? Is it punt? Punt. Pant. Who knows? Italians, though. Pass. I don't like it. It's very dirty. The dirt flavor is all over this. You get a little something extra at the very end here. Just a very quiet little piece of cherry but mostly this just tastes like you suck your face in the, the ground and started eating. Uh, Alberta Premium Cross with Punta Mes. I like that. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Alberta Premium comes in to the ring against Punta Mes and doesn't take no shit. That's a wonderful combination. God damn, man. It's crazy how much the rye is affecting these. You expect rye to be pretty much rye, but it is not rye. Rye is not just rye. Rye is many splendored things. Buttery, spicy, sweet cherry vanilla. Oh man, that's good. That's a great combo. I'm gonna tell you what, <laughs> this Alberta Premium, whoop, right down the line seems to be the winner. It is also the strongest alcohol content by volume. But you know, when you're making cocktails, that's not without merits. You are losing a lot of loudness in your flavors by adding water and other ingredients it's not just that this is the highest proof it also has um the most flavor as a result it's the least watered you know because that's how that works stuff comes out of a barrel at 120 proof 140 proof or whatever they add water to it when they add it to the bo bottles and how much water you add is going to change how much flavor is in that juice that spirit this one's got a lot of flavor. It really comes to dance. Okay, so now we're moving on to our bullet rye versus Punta Mes. Very meh. But at the very least, I can say it's a Manhattan for sure. It's a cocktail. You can taste the, the spots. You can taste the variances. You can taste a little bit of rye spice, a little bit of vermouth bitterness, a little bit of... You can taste those cherries. The cherries are quite loud. Not the worst in the table, but of the ones, you know, I would say second from the bottom of these on the, as far as Punta Mes goes. Um, yeah, second from the bottom. But that's a big difference. There's a big leap between the Mictors and the Bullet. High West versus Punta Mes. Now hang on. The High West up till now has tasted exactly the same as the uh, the whistle pig. The dirt flavors here are very muted by comparison. Let me try the whistle pig again. I'm not curious now. <laughs> so here, the Punta Mez pairs with the High West sufficiently to convince me that these are different spirits because they do yield a very different result. I mean, maybe my pour was a little off on the two, but as far as I can tell, the High West and Punta Mes, not a bad combo. 
at all. It is um, not overpoweringly dirt flavored. Rye spice, actually. Finally, we're out of that dirt round, that dirt world. Finally. It does taste a bit wet, to be perfectly honest. It's a little over muted. But at the moment, I'm getting rye spice and cherry, which is not wrong. That's kind of what you want. However, I would also say that this is really not any better than this, in this case. The main magic that's happening here, for reasons I can't explain, between the High West and the Punta Mes, is that most of that dirt flavor, that earth garden tiller flavor, is turned down which is maybe not what you actually want. If you wanted a cocktail that really featured High West, I don't know that this is what you would want because High West tastes like that dirt thing. It's got that dirt thing and here we're not getting that. So I don't know what the right answer is. It's a tough, tr this is a tricky spot for me. Is this better? Because here we have a cocktail that takes what I would kind of consider to be somewhat of an undesirable quality in a rye and moderates it or is that undesirable quality that I subjectively dislike, is that actually objectively the feature, the thing that people want out of this? And then you put it with Punta Mez and you don't get it anymore. I don't know. I am at an impasse with myself. This is, is this Kafka-esque? Is this a Kafka-esque moment? I don't know. I mean, I haven't turned into a cockroach, so. Two rows to go. We've got uh, Dolan. And what the hell is this shit called? Stalino. Torino Vermouth from Stalino Hotel. Okay, whatever. All we gotta do now is shake up some more ice and water. Ice and water is the order of the day. A oh, pour. Let's shake that up. It's a good thing I can't feel my hands anymore. Do the same thing. <laughs> I took a break and I still forgot to go get myself a strainer. All right, whatever. We'll just do this finger strain move. <laughs> uh, an ounce. All right, Michter's Cross with Dolan Vermouth. Here we go. That is not untasty. That's good. I like that. So if you have a bottle of Michter's and you want to make Manhattans, get yourself a bottle of Dolan Vermouth. They pair very well. It is pretty much just the vermouth that's coming through. It's very sweet and tasty. Not a bad Manhattan. Maybe not a very complicated Manhattan. It's really one note. It's just sort of this sweet cherry thing, but it's not offensive. I like it. So on the balance, that's by far the best Michter's Manhattan we've had yet. Here comes Rittenhouse crossed with Dolan. Now this one's starting to taste like dirt, very mildly, but really what that is, is honestly, I think that's just a lot of rye spice coming through. So the Dolan is a delicate vermouth, even though it has the ability to fill the void left by the Michter's. Um, in the presence of something with a little bit more oomph to it, it does get a little bit lost. Not a bad Manhattan though. Okay, here we go. Old Forester crossed by Dolan Vermouth. That's bizarre. Tastes like cherry candy. Cherry, sweet, spice. And ironically, I think this is the worst of the Old Forester Manhattans. I mean, it does have a very long flavor profile and evolution. I just think it's the worst example of an old Forester Manhattan. Extreme cherry, very cherry by comparison to any other Manhattan in the, in the grid here. Very cherry. I mean, like it is still just cherry for miles. That's kind of, that's un, unprecedented. Would never have expected that. Things are often, particularly in mixology, more than the sum of their parts. You put this with that and what you get, it doesn't add up. It add, you know, two plus two add, equals six in a lot of cases. Okay, here we go. Whistle pig crossed with Dolan. Again, I am surprised. The dirt profile is mostly gone. How could that be? Hold on a second. Let's go back to that after we have a big old swiggery do of water. Lagua fresca. Really kind of scrubbing out the old apparatus here. All right, here we go. Whistle pig crossed by Dolan. The Dolan kills the dirt. There's no dirt left, which is crazy because this is so dirt forward. Um, again, 
if you're trying to make a whistle pig Manhattan, the Dolan is the way to go. All you get is cherry, sweet wine. But I will say this, the stuff that makes rye rye, that baking spice, that rye, it's gone. It is totally lost. It's all wrapped up in whatever that dirt flavor is that this Dolan is killing. Maybe that's something to consider. If you like Whistle Pig 10 year rise dirt flavor, you would hate a Dolan Vermouth Manhattan made with it. Okay, Alberta Premium. So far, my favorite rye of the list against Dolan. Ooh. We like that. Oh, yes. What? An evolution. That tastes good. Earthy, but not overpowering. Rye, but not overpowering. Cherry. I mean, it's just so well balanced. You get cherry, earth, and rye. Boom, boom, boom. In order. I mean, it's just each note is individuated and uh, contextual. And then you get this oak that comes out. Oh, that is actually very good. Ooh, and then like peanut butter? What? Yes, you get peanut butter. That's crazy. That's really neat because that is not a flavor profile that we saw in any of these other Manhattans made with the Alberta Premium. It only came out with the Dolan. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Ooh, I like that. Man, that's tough to say isn't my favorite right now. What a surprise. <laughs> Who could have predicted? Uh, Bullet Rye versus Dolan Vermouth. Just cherry and very muted. I would actually say that that is the worst of the Bullet Ah, Manhattans. This is such an informative experience. I mean, it. I am surprised at every turn. Excuse you. Stay in line there, Martini Interassi. High West versus Dolan. Ooh, I don't like that at all. It's just bitter. There's no evolution. There are no other notes. It is strictly just dirty, dirty dirt. But not even like in a way that where you could say it's dirt profile forward. It's kind of washed out and muted across the board. But what flavor is it that's coming through that's not gone? Dirt. And not even in a way that's like dirt forward. Honestly, if you wanted a dirt forward cocktail, try anything other than the Dolan with the High West or with the Whistle Pig. Because they'll all be more dirty. But the Dolan with the High West, it just kills any character it really has. It's just bloop, very flat. A whole nother row. Finger strainer pour into the lid. Two, uh, two, two half ounces. It's the final row. It's the final countdown. All right, so here we go. Michter's crossed with Tar Starlino Hotel Vermouth. Kind of a wild card. Whoa. It smells, smells like the boardwalk. It smells like going down to the Point Pleasant boardwalk when I was a young man. Mmm. Cotton candy. And popcorn. Pizza. Oh. Candy apples. Here we go. And artificially flavored Manhattan. Not a good Manhattan. Honestly, the worst Manhattan on the table. Honestly. <laughs> it's just the worst. It does have a kind of interesting evolution towards a plastic flavor, if I'm honest. Um, that, and I know this sounds terrible, but I don't hate it. I actually think it's an interesting turn. But on the table right now with these 42 Manhattans, I will tell you, that would not be the Manhattan I would go for. Let's leave it at that. This is Rittenhouse Rye crossed with the Starlino Hotel, Torino Vermouth. And this I like. It is, 
what is that flavor? Uh, cherry, sweet vermouth, candy apple wine. This I like. It actually accentuates the Rittenhouse in a way that I find appealing. Old Forester crossed. Oh, that almost went off the edge of the bar there. Crossed with Torino. Starlino Vermuta. Bitter, sharp, tart cherries. Berry cherry. Sharp, tart, bitter cherry. And diesel fuel. Not bad, actually. Very good. That's an excellent Manhattan. Loving that Manhattan, in fact. In fact, I really like that Manhattan. Of all the ones that were cherry forward so far, and there's only four more after this, this is the most pleasantly cherry forward Manhattan. So if you wanted a cherry forward Manhattan, go with Old Forester crossed by the um, Starlino Hotel Torino Vermuta. Um, I like that a lot. Okay, Whistle Pig versus Starlino Vermouth. Oh my God. Dry. Un uncharacteristically dry and bitter, but I mean, I suppose that makes sense because the Whistle Pig has tasted like dirt all the way through. By far the driest of the Starlino Manhattans I've had so far. But of the Whistle Pig Manhattans, it is perhaps the most devoid of Whistle Pig character. So in that regard, I would have to say this is sort of a failure. And then of course, of the Manhattans, would I say it's a good Manhattan? Earth, cherry, bitter. No, I would actually say that it's a terrible Manhattan. I think that a number of the other Manhattans are better. Moving on. This is Alberta Premium crossed with the Hotel Starino um, Vermouth. I think it's the worst of the Alberta Premium cocktails. Although it has a lot of character. It does have a strong evolution, a strong presence, and you get the earth and the rye and the baking spice and all the flavor profiles that you would want from a Manhattan. But of the Alberta premiums, it's the most muted. It's the most toned down. It's the least loud. And by that regard, I gotta say, it's the worst of the Alberta premium Manhattans. It really nukes the Alberta premium. This is bullet rye crossed with Starino Hotel, Torino style vermouth. That ain't bad. Cherry, sweet oak, vanilla, bitter. That is the best of the, um, the bullet rye Manhattans by far. I think so, I think so. If you're using bullet, get yourself some Starino Hotel, uh, Torino style of vermouth. I don't know. I gotta say it that way, but I do. Uh, but I just do, I just do. Uh, that ain't bad. Okay, here we go. High West, oh my God. High West versus Starino Hotel. Torino style vermouth. I don't think I like that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's overly bitter. Of everything at the table, that is overly earthy and bitter in a way that I find kind of unappealing. No good. No bueno, no bueno. Where, where is the best Manhattan? The best Manhattan is probably right here. And this is Antica Formula crossed with Alberta Premium. Ooh, that's good. That is something special. It's buttery. It is rye, vermouthy, vanilla, cherry, oak. It's got it all put together. What do I love? I love the um, Alberta Premium crossed with Antica Formula. I like <laughs> almost a disaster. I like Alberta Premium crossed with 
um, Dolan or Punta Mes. I think those are both chef's kiss delicious. I like Old Forester with Martini and Rossi, Noli Pret, or Torino, uh, Hotel Starino Vermouth. I think all of that is good. I think your best Manhattans are gonna be made with Old Forester or Alberta Premium. Your next best bet is gonna be Rittenhouse Rye, which is consistently quite good across its entire line. Um, your worst bet is gonna be Michter's Rye. Don't, don't use this, it's bad. <laughs> um, High West, uh, dirty, different, if you want that, it's good across the line, but maybe not with the Dola, which sort of mitigates its dirt. Um, and the same can be said for Whistlepig. Between Whistlepig and High West, who do I prefer? Honestly, even though it's lower in proof, I prefer High West. I thought the Whistlepig was very, very dirt flavored. Um, the High West brought some other flavor components with it. So, uh, guys, I made 42 fucking bananas. I tasted them, and uh, whatever my answer was earlier in this episode, I stand by it. I stand by it. You understand? I got no better answer than, uh, now than I did then. Hey, guys, I'm Greg. This is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. If you like this show, you should know I do this kind of thing live all the time on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HGD. I'm on Instagram at how to drink. I'm on Twitter at how to drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. Uh, this is me doing the show for you, Greg from how to drink. Um, the cocktail show. If you liked this episode, there are so many other episodes of How to Drink because I've been making this show for five years, and here they are. There are many, There, I can only put up four. There are four other episodes that you can choose from. Four other episodes that you may choose from. One, two, three, four. Choose wisely. Intrepid.